Hi, my name is Stefan Lindblad and I'm an illustrator and graphic designer from Stockholm, Sweden. In this little video tutorial, I want to show you a couple of ways of image adjusting a pencil drawing that I made uh, draw on a slight jello-ish paper. And uh, I want to make it more white and do some image adjustments to it. And I want to use the lens object features and later on I'm gonna show you how to color it a little bit also so but before we move on um, uh, with that we're gonna go first and make this image which is now an RGB image and temporarily make it into a grayscale image leave it as it is in this dialog convert to grayscale and just click OK and you're gonna see it turns gray yep so now it's a grayscale, 8 bit grayscale. We're going to make it once again back into an RGB color. We do that because we want to be able to use all the features, uh, all the tools, and everything um, available for RGB images. Some of these are not available when it's a grayscale image, and I can't color, use the color swatches here. Um, which I'm going to use later on if I'm working in a grayscale mode. So I have to work, so I have to work in RGB mode. So, but this is now an RGB color and it's gray. So, um, many times when you do image adjustments like tone curve and so on, contrast enhancement and everything, you many times go to the menu and adjust to choose something, uh, something here. But I want to show you something that is where everything you do here is non-destructible on the image itself so for example I'm gonna use the tone curve for example when I'm using the tone curve like this one here what I'm doing is I'm allowing me to go back again and make adjustment to, to the tone curve uh, all the way the, the, the process I'm working with, the, with this project with this image so I click OK here, and for example, if I can turn it off and turn it on, and as you can see, I can go back and make more adjustments if I need. Uh, that would not be possible if I was working from this from this uh, text here. So um, I'm going to use another one too. We're going to use what's called contrast enhancement in Corel Photo Paint. In other programs. Uh, it's it might be called levels, but in Corel Photo Paint, which is the program uh, part of the Corel Draw Graphics Suite, it's called Contrast Enhancement. Because I've done this many times before, uh, I know that a level, uh, a value here, uh, I usually use for this yellow paper because this is one of my favorite sketchbooks. Is 68, so I'm gonna write 68. Otherwise, you can just drag up and down here uh, trying to find the value that works for you but as I said I, I know it's going to be 6 states so I'm going to write 6 states over here in the end on the other side it always says 255 even here I know that usually I line up this colored paper around 240 245 so I'm going to write 240 and here's going to be 60 I think I touched the keyboard there so anyway, so 6 to 18 in this corner and 2 and 4 here, and I click OK. And from there, I'm going to use contrast enhanced uh, contrast brightness, contrast intensity. I'm going to use the one in the middle, which is contrast, and I'm going to wind up somewhere here, 89 or maybe 81 or something like that. Okay, that's pretty bright, isn't it? So from there, I'm going to go back to curve and see if we can do there yeah we're going to drag down the white a little bit more so we get it more proper as I wanted it so now you see I already now had to make some adjustments when I was working with it. and that is so perfect when you're working with with lens objects so um, I select background and now I'm going to start coloring um, I create a new object and I go to brush tool uh, and here, oh, here is the uh, brush settings docker. Uh, if I click here, I'm gonna 
all the default brushes that are here are available are available from here. Uh, in the bottom, you see two of my own. Usually, I have much more on my own here, but uh, I was cleaning the computer the other day, so um, I only have two there for the moment. So I'm going to choose the uh, what I call a little bit more blurry one. Uh, and if you've been to London, you know that the Chelsea Fire Station, which is in London, UK, uh, the doors are slightly red. So when I color this one here now, we're going to see if I just color like that, it, it's, it covers my the outlines of my pencil. So what I want to do is to use something that I just love, and that's the merge mode, as you can see here. When I'm putting here, you see that it says merge mode. You can use multiply or if darker uh, or just anything that you think fit your project. For this one, I use multiply. But this is too dark, isn't it? So uh, I don't want to draw it like that. So I'm just going to take away that again and redo it. And then I choose multiply. So you can see how I did it. And then I start to, to paint the doors. As you can see, this red is really, really dark. So I can't really see the, um, the pencils. And actually, that's okay right now. I can change. I can, of course, adjust this a little bit. And I'm going to do it right away. Over here, you see something called opacity. So I'm going to drag down the opacity, make it more transparent. And there you see the doors coming, uh, coming alive a little bit more. My pencil sketch is drawing the scene much better here. So I'm going to quickly make the doors red. Um, and I just want to, I'm not going to do the most perfect artwork for you here. I'm just going to show you how to do this. Uh, and from here, I'm going to take another object. Uh, I'm going to take a, another color and we'll see if we can choose one of the other. This is a standard color tablet, by the way. Uh, and I'm going to take a brown. When you press down on one of them, you're going to see there's a lot of swatches close uh, the one that I choose. And many times these work. Sometimes you want to go here even and you get the old classic. Uh, feature here, but we're not going to use that one. We're just going to choose the brown that we have here. So I'm going to take a new object there as you saw, and then back to multiply, make some opacity, and then we start to uh, color this as well. Uh, so this is what I'm going to do. It. So hopefully, we can do it like that. Um, can't stress enough how wonderful it is to work with these features in color paint. This way, uh, it's quite wonderful, isn't it? It's like I'm painting underneath, um, and it's just wonderful. And I think I'm gonna put some sky color on this one before we end this video tutorial, um, showing you how to do everything in coral photo paint, which I highly recommend. We're going to take a, uh, a blue color, we're going to take this bright one, make a new object, multiply, and we're going to color this one. Ah, that's pretty bright, isn't it? But that's okay because we're going to go back to the opacity again. Because um, I want to have this old color here. I'm just showing you how how work with this one here. So color that too. Um, do it like that and that uh, and that's actually quite nice to be honest. And I tend to leave some white there uh, so I don't color everything and that kind of give you a sense of clouds. Uh, which is nice. Up here is, by the way, the, the spine on my sketchbook. Yes, you know what it is. Uh, 
I kept that in my scan drawings you can see see a little bit Okay, so um, here we go. Hope you like this um, and enjoy the day wherever you are. Thank you.